Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today, Bortnikov week continues, and sadly, extremely sadly, um, this is the final full bottle review of Bortnikov that I have. I still have more samples and others that I'll be talking about from the brand, but this is the final Bortnikov full bottle review, so we have to sort of wave the white flag of full bottle Bortnikov reviews. This is called Shipra du Nord, and um, this is going to be a positive review because I enjoy this fragrance. However, I have to be 100% honest with you guys. If you came to me and said, Ramsey, of every single Bortnikoff bottle that you own, you have to get rid of one, this would probably be the one that I would get rid of, all right? And that may seem a little strange to you because I am a Sheepra lover. I love Sheepras. Actually, it's my favorite category of fragrance. Um, Sheepers are complex and mossy and mysterious and earthy, um, and they, they can go in so many different directions. You can have floral Sheepras, you can have leather Sheepras, you can have um, uh, animalic Sheepras, uh, you can have all these different types of Sheepras uh, that uh, just depends on how the perfumer sort of wants to play it. And um, so here, this is kind of considered as a spicy Sheepra, if you will. Uh, there are no floral notes listed, believe it or not, but we'll talk a little bit about that. Uh, it came out in 2020. Of course, Dmitry Bortnikov is the perfumer. And um, so let's go through the note listing, read the blurb, and then I'll kind of give you my two cents. So uh, top notes of bergamot and orange with a heart of peach and nutmeg, base of oak moss, benzoin, Siberian deer musk, cedar, birch tar, and tonka bean. So just real quick, for those of you who do not know, Shipra is a fragrance category like uh, Oriental or Fougere or something like that, right? Uh, so Sheepra is a broad fragrance category, and rumor is that the name ended up coming about uh, because the island of Cyprus is rumored to where Aphrodite, uh, the goddess of love, slept on a bed of mosses, and, and moss, or oak moss, is a very pivotal part of the Sheepra construction, if you will, okay? So what has really hampered many of these houses as time has gone on, and why it has made it so tough to uh, properly create a true Shipra, you know, proper to uh, the history of some of the great perfumers of the past, the old Guerlains, the, the Francois Cotis of the world. Um, the reason that it's so hard to recreate nowadays is because of the fact that uh, oak moss is heavily, heavily res restricted by IFRA. And so nowadays, even if you go buy a $3,500 bottle of uh, Roja Dove's uh, Houtlux, uh, one of the most expensive Sheepras that I know, there's still only a certain amount of oak moss that can be used in that composition. Now, perfumers will argue and say, well, but we could use the material, that we can use like a fractional distillation of oak moss where the bad parts are taken out or whatever it is. But there are others that say, yes, but that makes it smell different. So there's this back and forth, right? And it's one of the reasons that the vintage fragrance market has exploded in recent years. Many people who really trust their own nose and they smell some of the stuff that's been coming out, they're so disappointed with some of the recent releases. Uh, and whether that's due to greed from the houses, whether that's due to IFRA, whether it's due to a combination, who knows. But um, many folks go to the past to get a great Sheepra. And, you know, rumor is that uh, oak moss may be even more heavily restricted as time goes on. So some perfumers, like I know Roja Dove, tried to create a Sheepra uh, without any oak moss. I think that was the uh, brief of Sheepra Extraordinaire, if you will, right? So it's a, it's a sad time if you're a Sheepra lover, but what's amazing is there are still these houses, for example, uh, these artisanal houses that do not follow IFRA. Uh, I think Dmitry Bortnikov's house is set up basically headquartered in Thailand, just like uh, Ariz Ladori, if I'm not mistaken. And um, so he can kind of put anything he wants in here. And if you just look at the color of this juice, you will see there is a lot of oak moss in here. And if you look at my skin, I sprayed this probably, oh, I don't know, 30 minutes ago. This is, again, by the way, I've been wearing it all day. It's almost seven o'clock at night. Um, this is probably one of the darkest Bortnikoffs as far as the juice goes, and my guess is that is the Oak Moss Absolute. I've shown it on my channel before. The actual Absolute looks so green, it's almost black, if that makes sense. Probably the color of my 69 Barracuda that I would love to own one day. That dark green, so dark, it's almost black. Oh, it's sexy. Anyways, um, back to Sheepra du Nord. Let's read the blurb, and then we'll talk a little bit about it. So, Sheepra du Nord is a classically inspired fragrance embracing the finest traditions of European perfumery and reviving the, ma the majesty 
of a long established style of fragrance. The Chypre scent originated in France in the early 19 in the early 20th century and in Chypre du Nord, perfumer Dmitri Bortnikov has brought his own unique and inimitable touch to the style. Opening with bright bergamot and succulent orange notes, the, the scent transitions to reveal the juicy sweetness of peach and the spiciness of nutmeg in its heart. And it is a spicy nutmeg. In the base of the composition, the truly unique and precious elements of the perfume make themselves apparent. Real oak moss has always been one of the quintessential ingredients of the Chypre scent, and here it makes its unmistakable presence felt. Resinous and sweet benzoin mingles with tonka bean and birch tar to produce a smooth and sensual, sensuous aura. Finally, rare and scarce Siberian deer musk imparts its magical qualities to round out this enchanting creation. Whilst the Chypre is a traditional and very common style of fragrance, this, this specifically cultivated ingredients used in Bortnikov scents means that Chypre du Nord has a depth of complexity and sophistication that is seldom found elsewhere. The rich extra de parfum concentration ensures an enduring and evolving experience for the wearer and allows the beauty of the perfume to be fully appreciated. This unisex creation can be enjoyed in all seasons and on all occasions. Allow yourself to be surrounded in a veil of beauty and refinement with this unforgettable perfume. Wow, that is a blurb. Um, so as usual, 50 mils is uh, $350 retail. Uh, nine, nine mils is $90. Okay, so they have the Discovery Atomizers. Um, and Chypre du Nord never came in the vintage uh, wood cap. If you watch some of my other reviews, Muscabi, even Amber Cologne, you notice the wood cap. This one, when it came out, because it came out in 2020, instantly started in the go in the in this type of cap. Now there's a second version that doesn't have the B right here, and it looks like there's like barbed wire like like lines around the um, front. So uh, I don't know very much about the new version. This is the only version I've ever owned or smelled. Okay. So I couldn't speak to the new version, but I assume um, that uh, everything's still fine with Chypre du Nord. I've never heard elsewhere. If you have any experience with the new version and you think it's different, do let me know. So um, here's the thing. Chypre du Nord in the online fragrance community amongst real frag heads takes some flack, okay? This is one that I don't think ever truly got hyped. It never really got off the ground. It was never the hype be beast that Muscabib or Oud Maximus or Oud Monarch were. Those were hyped to the max. This one was kind of the redheaded stepchild, if you will. Uh, and one of the reasons, I think, is that some popular, let's say, call them influencers, said that the musk in this smells very similar to Musk Habib. And uh, that it's a little bit redundant of a release, is basically what was being said. And I um, am a little bit of a two minds, because yes, I actually do think the real Siberian deer musk, which, by the way, in a perfect world, if you go back in time... That's how I, I just imagine um, the great perfumers of the past would have loved to make a proper sheep or using real Siberian deer moss, but even uh, deer musk. But even going back to the Jacques Guerlain's times, or rumor was is that they weren't using real deer musk even then. It was a synthetic deer musk, even going back that far. So, um, you know, this is a, um, it's it's an amazing opportunity. I really feel every time I get to smell a fragrance with real deer musk in the world we live in in 2024, I feel like it's an honor and a joy. Uh, and I will say that there is a similarity to the musk in Musk Habib. Uh, the base of Musk Habib, of course, is real Siberian deer musk. But this does go a little bit into that chocolatey, musky, powdery side. Uh, you know, Musk Habib goes into that that as well. But you're hit with that big, bright, custard like banana smelly ylang ylang which is very floral someone left a comment saying they think that ylang ylang note makes it lean feminine now i disagree but i see exactly what they're saying so if you like uh real musk fragrances let's say but you don't like that bright ylang ylang hit in musk habib and you want to smell another fragrance portnikoff has done using real musk this is the one that i would recommend okay um and and so this goes to the sort of um, mossy, big slug of oak moss to my nose. I've heard some reviewers that I really trust write, like uh, on Kafkesk's blog, she says that she's never smelled an oak moss that smells anything like this, and she has used the real absolute and all this stuff. I think this smells like real oak moss to me, so I'm not sure where she's coming from. 
I have some of the actual oak moss Russian and Adam very kindly sent me, and I can definitely pick it out in here. Oak moss, the real oak moss, the way I describe it is just imagine you are standing inside of the tree, like you're one of those Keebler elves, okay? And the inside of the tree is filled with oak moss, almost like a carpet of oak moss. And you can rub your hand on it and feel the texture of the oak moss, and it's green, earthy, dank, dark. That's the feeling of, of real oak moss, and I definitely get it in Sheeper du Nord, 100%. Um, and, you know, this is part of what makes this so special, because you're smelling a proper Sheepra with a proper amount of oak moss, not regulated by Ifra, and you're smelling it with real deer musk. So um, you have two sort of special ingredients where the masses who go to Macy's to buy their perfume will never in a million years get to smell anything like this. This is for the enthusiasts, okay? This is for the hobbyists. Um, and so, but it does open up with a very bright bergamot and that orange note, which is turning into a little bit of a Dimitri signature move, if you will. The orange was in things like Mysterious Oud, and I've talked about a couple others that use that sort of uh, orange feel, and you get it. Um, but instantly, I feel like that bergamot orange combo, which is bright and um, shiny, shimmery in a way, is like almost... Um, you're going to feel it overpowered by a couple other notes. One, the most important is uh, the birch tar in the wood. So you get this woody, smoky birch tar that starts to come in. And you also get this peach note. Now, you cannot talk about a peach fragrance without mentioning Mitsuko. It is absolutely impossible. I think Mitsuko is, um, this is a late 1970s bottle, I believe. But uh, this is the Parfum de Toilette, which this particular concentration, the Parfum de Toilette, is no longer made today. This is my favorite version of Mitsuko. I um, am absolutely in love with this fragrance. I think it's a masterpiece. Rumor is, Kafkes talked about it on her um, Shepra du Nord review, if you want to read a little bit about it, but the um, rumor back in the day is the reason that um, whenever Mitsuko was created, that um, that it was, it was actually chosen to... Um, uh, that Jacques Guerlain chose to use a peach note with that castorium and labdanum and everything in the base uh, and spices and stuff like that is because that was the note that made it closest to the woman that he was in love with and making love to at the time, right? That was the closest that he could get to her skin using that peach note. But ever since then, uh, the peach note in a Ashipra, which is one of the most famous uh, peach accords to create a fruity Ashipra, will always remind you of the greatest, one of the greatest fragrances of all time. And I know I don't even have a cap to this bottle, but look how beautiful the architecture is with the heart. Um, even nowadays, the upside down heart bottle or whatever it is, or the, um, you know, cap, the, the heart that's inverted for the cap. I mean, Guerlain's packaging is to me just top notch. Um, I love Guerlain's packaging. I don't like what they do now, how they constantly change packaging over and over and over and over. Like the newest change is they're putting the um, uh, the Middle Eastern collection, I forget what it's called, they keep even changing the damn name of the collections, into the bottles that were made for like the um, Herba Fresca and stuff like that, right? So it's just constant changing, constantly. It drives me crazy. But some of those old Guerlain bottles are absolutely stunning. Uh, but I just mentioned that because it is literally impossible to smell Chipre du Nord and not think Mitsuko is sort of the inspiration. And I mean, what better inspiration could you ask for? You know, when I think about peach in a fragrance, I think about Mitsuko in, in uh, a Chipre. And when I think about plum, I think about Rochas Femme, two of the all-time great fragrances of all time, uh, both marketed towards women, two of the greatest Chipres of all time. But men, do not be afraid to try these. I'm telling you, um, trust the ram. I will not steer you wrong. So. Um, the first uh, fifth, 10, I would say 10 to 15 minutes is the part of the fragrance that uh, always throws me off a little bit because I do smell something animalic. There's no doubt about it. it uh, and I'm not sure if it's kind of the real Siberian deer musk just um, seeping through, keep creeping in, if you will, right? Um, but it does give hints of castorium or civet. And I mentioned it with Mitsuko in the old days, there, there you know, Guerlain was known for its vanilla, and it was known for its castorium. Um, and so it wouldn't surprise me if Dimitri put a little bit 
of some animalics in here. Very common to have some animalics in a Sheepra's. One of the thing, the one of the reasons why Sheepra's are my favorite category of fragrance is because Sheepra's are um, not just earthy and mossy and mysterious, but they're also very complex and they change a lot. So they give me a lot to smell. I, I, whenever I'm wearing a good Sheepra, I'm never bored. From the time I first spray to two, three hours in, four or five hours in, eight, nine hours in, you know, the the um, way that they evolve on my skin always gives me something to smell. So I'm always kept interested and always kept watching out for the twists and turns. That's one of the reasons I absolutely love Sheepra's. Um, and so the other thing about the Animalics here is it could be the birch tar. So I already mentioned it earlier that that birch tar is a note in Chypre du Nord that makes its presence known pretty early on. Um, it's almost overdosed in a way, but it gives it this smoky, leathery aspect. I've talked a lot about birch tar on the channel. I love birch tar type fragrances, uh, but it almost feels like early on in the beginning, you know, and it does ramp up as time goes on, but um, early on in the beginning, it just really feels like smoke seeping through the cracks of the earth, like when a volcano is about to erupt, but it hasn't really erupted yet, and the smoke is just seeping through every crack or crevice, right? Uh, that's kind of what the birch tar feels like. You can smell Sheeper du Nord, but it feels like the birch tar is just creeping in over some of those other notes. Some people don't like that. I actually don't mind it. I really like birch in a fragrance, and I really like smoky fragrances, so this doesn't bother me, but some people, that really wrong foots them. Um, and I think what's happening in Cheaper de Nord is, yes, you get this very artisanal feel. The real musk and, and the heavy-handed use of oak moss in Cheaper de Nord makes the fragrance feel 3D and feel alive to me. Uh, it really adds depth. That's one of the biggest, I think, issues of modern perfumery is that that textured oak moss, which was used so often in vintage fragrances, um, added this dimension of 3D, this realism, that is missing now in modern perfumery. And all of the amazing strides that have been made, the amazing captive molecules and synthetics and everything that's being used nowadays. And still, I think perfumers have a hard time replacing just what oak moss did to a fragrance. You know, that, um, that textured feeling. Imagine, like run your hand over your carpet, but just imagine you're running it over moss on a tree. And that is really what oak moss does to, to a fragrance, in my opinion. Um, but on the other hand, this fragrance especially, uh, and maybe Musk Habib as well, although less so to my nose, feels the most, I would say, vintage inspired of all the Bortnikovs that, I, that I've that uh, i smelled. If you know your old Sheepras, if you love your old Sheepras, um, you know, I've done videos on my favorite Sheepras and I had to actually split it up by leather Sheepras and, you know, the fruity floral Sheepras because it was just impossible to rank otherwise, but I've ranked both of those categories on my channel. Um, and it's funny, I was um, going, I was looking at Persilaise's channel, who I consider probably one of the best in the game who does this. I really respect Persilaise. Um, and even though he calls his, uh, his full bottles he gets from the brand samples, we won't go there. But uh, I, I really respect him and I think he's one of the good guys, okay? Um, and I, but I was looking at his channel. He's put up 500 videos or something in, in the last like eight years, seven years, six years, whatever, however long he's had his channel. In the last two years, I've put out like 850 videos or something crazy. So there is a ton of content. So if you're new to my channel, go back through the playlist, go back through the history of the videos, go back through the live streams. There is a lot of content if you're interested in exploring further. Um, but, you know, if you know your old Sheepras, uh, Sheepra du Nord will make your ears perk up. It just will. You'll you'll appreciate it. You'll appreciate the um, the you know sort of nod, the homage to the greats, but also done in this artisanal style that uh, feels vintage but feels artisanal as well. If that makes sense. Um, and so, however, interestingly enough, a few things I will mention. The spices were very intense on me. So when I read that note listing, you probably picked up on the peach and, and citruses and, you know, woods and stuff like that. Uh, and the nutmeg is almost seen as like an afterthought in the note listing. You know, people think, ah, oh, nutmeg, it just maybe adds a little bit of uh, effect or it acts like the referee and keeps all the notes in bounds. Not here. Nutmeg takes its referee whistle and throws it in the stands and participates is basically what the nutmeg does here. Uh, it does not fuck around in this in this fragrance. Um, 
it steals the ball and goes straight to the rack. Uh, Nutmeg is pretty heavy here, heavy overdosed. And I think there's other um, spices mixed, you know, that, that nutmeg note, which seems so innocuous, is not, is kind of what I'm trying to say. You know, it uh, it's not just sitting there alone in the corner and just waiting for all the other notes to have all the fun. It is a participant in this game, okay? Uh, and so if you um, if you took the nutmeg and mixed it with something extra spicy, I don't know what other notes it could be. Maybe it's cumin or something else, you know, but it doesn't smell like cumin, but it feels like there's something just heavier mixing with the nutmeg. It doesn't smell like Dmitry Bortnikov's traditional nutmeg cardamom combo either. It smells like there's something else, some other spices going on. Uh, and I'm not sure where that's coming from, but I will tell you that one thing about Chypre du Nord that I found very interesting, and I get this over and over again, I've had this fragrance for when it, I mean, when it first came out in 2020, I bought it. Uh, as soon as it came out, I bought this. And um, I remember the first time I wore it thinking, wow, there is a stage, especially, you know, this is probably 45 minutes old now, this spray, and now I'm already starting to get it. There's a stage in the mid where once the opening starts to really settle on your skin, that woodiness, which I mentioned in the base, there is cedar. It almost feels like uh, you took the cedar and you fermented it in the same way that you would ferment oud, okay? So what's interesting about this conversation about fermenting other woods other than, other than cedar is um, they actually do a fermentation style very similar to the way Indian oud is fermented for a drink called kombucha. I think that's what it's called. I don't drink it, but I know of its existence. Um, if I'm mispronouncing that, apologize. But I think it's called kombucha. It's like a it's like a fermented tea, okay? Uh, and you find you'll find it in your Whole Foods and in those kind of stores, right? Uh, the bougie, yes, you know, we drink our kombucha like this. Um, but it's in those stores, uh, and it it gives a similar fermented like smell. That's what the cedar in here smells to me like. It doesn't smell like traditional just, you know, um, pencil shaving cedar. It doesn't. It smells like it's been fermented like oud. It still smells like cedar, but it's like cedar oud, if that makes sense to you. Um, and so the uh, oud, there's, the, you'll notice there's no oud note listed, but there is a slight oud accord to my nose, okay, even though it's not listed. The other thing and this is kind of addition by addition by subtraction, you'll notice, is that there is no florals listed. And I think that is very, very interesting. Um, just kind of the nerdy perfume side of me is like, uh, you know, getting my pocket square and my, and my eraser and mechanical pencils all ready to have this conversation with you guys. But um, there is a gaping hole in this note listing. And if you look at any proper sheep or note listing, many of them have some sort of florals in there. It's just impossible. Uh, to get away with not using something lilac, ylang, you know, jasmine, rose, lily of the valley, whatever it is, right? There's usually some florals in here. And Chypre du Nord is, is uh, conspicuously missing. Uh, and so it's like, like I said, it's a gaping hole. And what makes it even more um, interesting is this is a Bornikoff because, you know, if you go back through my old videos, so in 2020, this is his, this would have been his sixth collection, okay? And his collections are not as big as Russian Adam. Usually he'll do like three or four fragrances or something. So they are smaller, right? Whereas Russian Adam releases larger collections sometimes. Um, but uh, I think by 2020, this is his sixth collection. And word on the street is that Bortnikov loved using heavy doses of florals, okay? Uh, just watch my previous Bordnikoff reviews. There's a playlist. You can watch them all if you're bored. But um, uh, the other fragrance that is in this particular collection that I have not smelled or reviewed on the channel is called Sans Fleur. And um, Sans Fleur and Chypre du Nord both have no floral notes listed at all. None. And so if you pull up the note listing, like I said, of Sans Fleur, it is strikingly absent of floral. So I have a theory. That, to, that Dimitri was like, yes, you think I can only work with florals? Sorry for my terrible Russian accent. Um, but he was like, okay, I'll show you guys, motherfuckers. And I think he purposely decided he was going to put out fragrances that did not have that floral feel of his previous collections. I think he started to get a little bit of a reputation. And if you go watch my old Bortnikov reviews, 
I think I'm fascinated by his use of florals. I think they're unique and I've never smelled anyone who uses florals in the way Dimitri does. And I don't know, I don't know what to attribute that to. I don't know if it's just the way his style, like his signature, his DNA. I don't know if it's just the quality of the florals that he's using or the quantity. I don't know what it is, I don't, but, but it's unique in the fragrance world to my nose. And, um, but when I smell Sheep or Dunord, where I'm going with this, this winding tail, come on, Ramsey, stay on path, is basically Sheep or Dunord, in my opinion, has to have some sort of florals. It's impossible, I think, to create this without it. There's definitely something, some rose, some jasmine sambach, something. I would just be gobsmacked if there actually was not any florals in here. It just, I don't think it's the normal sort of bouquet that Bortnikoff started to give you where it was the magnolia, frangipani, blue lotus, these strange exotic flowers. I think he stayed away from that, but I wouldn't be surprised if there was something in here, some floral aspect that works with the peach. I think maybe if you start looking at the note listing, you see the peach and maybe he used some of the Alangi Lang used in Muscabib from a year before or, you know, something like that. Um, people may have been saying it's too close to Mitsuko, so maybe he just decided to avoid the floral direction altogether, but I definitely detect some florals. I, I, I just can't imagine, I can't imagine them not being in here. Okay, uh, so I think uh, what's most interesting, in the beginning couple seconds when you spray Sheep or Dinord, you get that sort of hit with orange and bergamot, and but the spices kick in pretty heavy on my skin. I cannot not say that enough. So really, um, uh, that heavy nutmeg and spices, um, gives off little hints of muskabib and the musk, when it comes to the, when, when I really start to get that musk note, it gives off these chocolatey vibes as well. Someone once said in muskabib that after a year of actually letting air into the bottle, that the, that the musk in muskabib turns chocolatey er as time goes on, right? Um, but it's interesting because the birch tar and, uh, the other thing about this fragrance, speaking of addition by subtraction, you'll notice that there's no labdanum listed. And to have a proper shipra, you're supposed to have labdanum. That is sort of one of the accords. You're supposed to have bergamot on the top, oak moss, and labdanum. Uh, and usually patchouli. So you'll notice there's no patchouli and there's no labdanum. Uh, I don't think there's any patchouli in here. Maybe in trace amounts, not even worth mentioning. But I definitely think there's some sort of labdanum in here. I, I, I mean you know, that ambery sort of benzoin, tonka, deer musk thing all seems wound into a ball, but maybe it's the birch tar giving that labdanum sticky because labdanum is so, it's almost like super gluing your fingers together if you ever touch it. I mean, it's like you have to work to pull your fingers to, uh, apart. Um, and, you know, it's like when they put those, uh, those rubber bands around the crocodile's mouths because their muscles to actually open are so small. Uh, that's kind of what it feels like. It, it, it definitely feels like there is a little bit of a labdanum, uh, hit in here. And, um, it works to give it this proper cheaper dry down. Very nice. Very enjoyable. And interestingly enough, Russian Adam just put out a video a day, not even a day, not even 24 hours ago on his new collection. He's calling the Musk Collection. Uh, and he said in that video something that I completely agree with. He said that, um... That deer musk smells, when you smell proper deer musk, you're not just smelling the powdery, um, you know, sort of warm, enveloping, you know, slightly sweet aspect of the musk. You're also smelling this uranus um, side and you're smelling the bits and pieces of what the deer ate, like the deer's diet affects the musk pod and how it, how it produces, right? Kind of like if you eat asparagus and then piss, your piss smells a certain way. Uh, and I love that theory by Russian Adam. I don't know if that's true or not, but I could totally see that being true because sometimes when you smell real musk, you also get, it's like you get the tree bark that the, that the deer ate. You get the moss, you know, the, the weeds, the roots, the grass. Um, and I think particularly the, the musk deer that you see the pictures of, they have fangs, they don't have horns. So normal deers have horns this way, they have fangs this way. And they use those fangs to kind of root in the ground to get uh, 
whatever it is, roots or, you know, I don't know what the hell they eat. Uh, do they eat grubs or I don't know, but it's probably mostly roots and, and, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and, and so, but the reason I mentioned that is whenever you're smelling, uh, sheep or du Nord, you definitely get aspects of the deer's diet. That's a great example, um, of the, of what the deer eats, maybe affecting the smell of the pod. Uh, and it's very, it's an, a very interesting theory and more interesting is m one of his fragrances. Now that it's public knowledge, I guess I can say it in the Russian Adam collection. One of his fragrances is inspired by my sort of, um, description of, uh, uh, of, uh, Queer de Russie, Chanel's Queer de Russie. How I've said it's like a vintage, you know, being in Soviet era Russia or pre-Soviet era Russia, where you're at this, at, with you know, with the Tsar in this banquet hall, beautiful chandeliers, everyone's wearing their mink coats and, you know, just the most expensive, e elaborate, extravagant outfits. Uh, and then you go outside and you hop into a carriage that's, you know, pulled by horses. You don't hop into your Bentley or your new Rolls Royce. You don't hop into your G5 and fly across the world. You hop into a carriage uh, where the horse shits and you smell the animal that, you know, you smell the shit, you smell uh, the dirtier parts of being in the wild, but you're in amongst the most powerful men in the country and, and, you know, a banquet of food on one side, but there's the other side of it. And Russian Adam told me my description of that inspired one of his fragrances, which I was like, man, I have to own that. Even though I'm on a no buy because, uh, of the divorce, basically, I have to, I have to own that. Uh, because if, if I had any part, even a tiny part to play in it, what an honor, right? And this, this new collection that he's putting out is inspired by animalics. And so he says that it basically gives it this 3D aspect that when you smell musks or animalics that it actually lifts the fragrance up. It doesn't bring it down, um, but it lifts it up because fragrances on their own can be pretty heavy and animalics lift it up. And I agree with that. Me and Russian Adam see uh, fragrance creation, I would say, in the same way. And um, that's probably the reason that Arizadori is my favorite house. Um, it's it's uh, it's it's my favorite house, and Guerlain's my favorite French house, if you will. So um, yeah, it's interesting. The chocolatey, powdery, uranus side of the musk kind of mixes with that earthy woodiness, um, that green, you know, oak moss, um, and and sort of the bark and roots and and weeds in this in this uh, woodiness from the cedar and the, and the oud dista, you know, imagine distilling cedar, right? Fermenting cedar in the same way, soaking it and all that stuff like you would with oud. Um, so interesting. Okay. That's kind of the, that's the whole journey as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we're 32, almost 33 minutes in. I think I was very thorough with this fragrance. And yet with all of that said, I stand by my original comment that if you said, Ramsey, you have to, you have to chop one of your Bortnikovs. This would be it. I think I would keep, um, you know, Oud Maximus and definitely Lao Oud. Lao Oud jumped to my favorite Bortnikov full bottle after wearing these more and more. I love that animalic funkiness of it. But someone made a great point. They said, but Oud Maximus better highlights Dimitri's work as a perfumer. Lao Oud feels like Bortnikov putting out a fragrance in honor of Russian Adam. It feels like more of a Russian Adam creation because it's so much focused on that animalic Oud and um, coffee and all that stuff that um, it feels like a Bortnikov inspired by Russian Adam. And, and that's my style. That's the kind of thing that I've come to love. So wearing these over and over again has been a treat for me. I've really enjoyed getting to know them. You know, when you have a big collection, you sometimes you have to prioritize. These were a long, long time coming. I mean, I've had this fragrance for four years and I've had the channel for now going on two and a half years and I've never reviewed it. So it is a long time coming. Sometimes people give fragrance reviewers a hard time if they see the same fragrance over and over and over again on their channel because they think maybe that the brand sent them something or, but these were all mine. Bortnikov never sent me anything for, for free ever. Um, you know, now some people, some individual people have sent me some things for Bortnikov, but Bortnikov has never sent me a thing. Uh, most of these are purchased with my own money. So I, um, yes, it's, it's just a long time coming. And so I hope you're enjoying Bortnikov week. I love wearing these type of fragrances. So it's a joy to wear and talk about them on the channel. If you have experience with Sheeper du Nord, do let me know. Love to hear your thoughts. Love the back and forth and feedback and 
Uh, thank you to everyone who is subscribed and loving. And you know, I get so many beautiful comments. Um, it's it's an all day long. I I uh, just get these beautiful comments that come through. So I appreciate everyone that takes the time to write and interact with me. So thank you very much. Thanks for uh, being a part of the Ram Fam, as Rogro would say. So thank you very much, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.